Hello and welcome by the Orchid Saga. And yeah, I thought this is a nice uh, opportunity to make a beautiful update of my Miltoniopsis because I just photographed them and I will quickly show you a few pictures that I've taken uh, of them with this backdrop. I personally like the uh, the bricks and also uh, the black uh, backdrops. I will have a black uh, backdrop soon, but um, yeah, now I'd use the uh, bricks and you will see me use those kind of pictures quite often in my um, thumbnails or for my thumbnails. But here are some uh, pictures that I have been taken of these beauties. And yeah, the fragrance is fantastic. Here I have my van, um, not running at the moment, so I can uh, smell them a bit better. But also I can show the blooms a bit better because otherwise they are moving quite quite a lot. And for taking pictures that's um, kind of hard, so therefore I have now the van not running at this moment. But yeah, I thought this is a beautiful opportunity uh, to um, film these beauties. My first one to rebloom was a similar, of actually the same one as this one, not the same plant, but it's exactly the same Miltoniopsis. Um, and it is a Princess Diana. Uh, I think this is the Rex or something, but it's a Princess Diana variety. And the first one is uh, already bloomed out. And then these four followed. The Her Alexander, the... Newton Falls from the Incas, beautiful. Another variety of the Princess Diana, as is this one. I think this one is the Rex. I will look it up and I will put it in the screen. Um, yeah, I think that's the the different varieties. But I, these are absolutely my favorite orchids. I love all my orchids, but the, these guys, the Pensy ones, the Pensy orchids. I really, really enjoy very, very much. I love the blooms and I love the fragrance. And they can be kind of hard to grow, but once you get a hang of it, it's beautiful. The award, when they uh, start blooming and look quite healthy, quite beautiful, straight blooms, is incredible because they are a little bit harder. So therefore, if you achieve it, it's, um, it's yeah, it's, it's like you, uh, it's really extra beautiful, I think, because uh, yeah, it's kind of sometimes a little yeah hard to uh, get them to rebloom, but um, yeah, these are the ones who are blooming. So now I go over to the area where I keep them because I have quite a, a few who are in spike. So let's have a look at them as well. I keep my Miltoniopsis down here and here because I can open this door and keep the uh, cool air directly on them. They like it a bit cooler than uh, the other orchids in general. But today it's uh, 21 degrees. I hope you can see it with... No, I'm sorry. 21 degrees with a humidity around 60. I like it between 60 and 65. So this is beautiful. Okay, well I have one here recovering. It's a beautiful purple one, if I remind. Yeah, it's a dark purple with a lighter purple. If I have a picture of the bloom, I think I have, I will show it in the screen. But I'm so happy this one is coming back to me. It's a very beautiful variety, if you ask me. Um, it has a little bulb. All the bulb, bulb that is uh, starting to rot, but I let it, leave it on at this stage. It's not always the orange rot. This is just an older bulb that is going over the rot. This rotting bulb is there for probably two or three months now. So I leave it alone because this one is about to start out new roots, I think. I think that's a new one. So I let it uh, root in, inside the pot. This is a rescue one, but I think, I think we are on the right track. We don't have that harmonica shaped leaf uh, on this one it's beautiful quite straight leaf so I think we are uh, on a right track like I said then we have another one here beautiful spike another spike here on this bulb this is the bulb that I grew in my care and it looks beautiful I'm so happy 
I think I found a way to uh, really grow them. And it cost me quite some years. <laughs> and I would say almost quite some tears. I never cried about it, but oh, did I lose them. Seriously, I couldn't keep them alive. And this bulb, same plant, has a flower spike coming and a new growth there. I think it has one uh, spike. I cannot show it, but somewhere I just saw it yesterday. It's also going to spike, so I have another one. This is the one that was the first for me that I had to uh, re-bloom. This is also a Princess Diana, like I said in the intro. Oh, in the start of this video, I'm sorry. Let's make a new growth here. Bigger one, but I saw another one starting over there. So it will have two new growths. Then we have this one. This is a species. It's now it's starting to recover, if I'm correct. Oh, I cannot get a tag out. Why not? It's not that it has that many roots. <laughs> okay, it's a Miltoniopsis Rosalii alba. I hope you can see it. I think it's like this. Um, but as you can see, it's a young plant. And it had some hard time. It had quite a hard time. It still is. But I see these grows. These three are really growing now. So I think... I think we are at a right path now. I'm not completely sure yet. But they start to, um, to look better. And then in the back we have another one. This is also a recovering one. And it's the Breathless Brilliant to be exact. But that one is also doing uh, fine in the pot. And this is also a Br Breathless Brilliant. They came together in one pot. I like to separate them. I probably will give one away. This was one plant but I split it up because it did grow in both directions. So I couldn't keep it in a pot. And it struggled a bit, but it's also making flower spikes. This new growth, not yet, but it's a little too small to make flower spikes, I think. This one is a little bit older. Sorry for the shaking there. But, um, yeah, another one spiking. Then we go downwards, and we have another one spiking with two spikes. This is a... I have a list as a purple with a yellow center. I probably have some pictures, otherwise I will be able to make some pictures soon, if everything goes right. But I have no idea for this one. Then we have another one <laughs> in spike. This one has one, two, three. And where is number four? Here is number four. I'm sorry. Oops. Four spikes, let me, four spikes in here, another one in here, on two bulbs. So each of these bulbs do have two spikes on them. I think this is the cream puff. I bought it as a no ID, but I'm not, uh, so I'm not completely sure, but I think it's the cream puff. And soon we will, I can show you the blooms. It doesn't remind me uh, very much of the Her Alexander. I wouldn't be surprised that this is a hybrid with the uh, Her Alexander as a parent, I think. And we have another one blooming. This one is also a recovery one, but it has roots in the pot. So therefore I let it uh, bloom. And then my last two, well, Almost last two. I have another one. That's a new one. I will show you in a minute. But these are the same ones, I think, because they did get in the same pot as well. These two guys. I did separate them as well. And whoops. Both of them have beautiful spikes. Very thick buds. They are about to open up. And obviously I can't wait to see. <laughs> I have no idea which one these are ID wise, so these are no ideas, but they are dark red if I remember correctly. So, 
and this one is a new one. I didn't show it in the start of the video because I didn't grow these blooms, but I enjoyed. Oh, these these were not open yesterday, so these very fresh. Oh, look at that pattern. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. <laughs> Let me try to. This is uh, absolutely stunning. This is probably my favorite one. <laughs> I love it. I really, really love it. The dark red, purple is red. I think I can describe it with a bit of yellow. But beautiful. And that pattern on the bloom on the lip is. It's just a piece of art. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. This is absolutely a favorite. And these blooms are here a while, so they do fade. And this one is probably to go over quite soon, but still, I still like them very, very much. And this has one has a spike here still, and we have a spike there in the back behind this one. So four spikes, if I'm correct. So we have a few blooms to come. I'm not repotting this yet. I just wait, it's a Miltoniopsis and it's very picky about the right time so as soon as it starts to make new growth and I must say yesterday I checked this one because I checked my orchids a hundred times a day <laughs> because I like them so much uh, oh, where are you? where are you, where are you? yes, there I hope you can see above my thumb there's a new growth coming not making new roots obviously but soon so that means that we can soon do a repot a transitioning a miltoniopsis into self-watering i will uh, i will film the process i think it's kind of interesting how to uh, get your miltoniopsis to grow in a self-watering set up and get them to re-spike and re-bloom again so that will be here on my channel soon I think yeah but this is the spot they do get uh, daylight obviously I have some lamps hanging as well but they do get some daylight uh, here not strong light but yeah let's say a little yeah, around Phenoliopsis light, I think. My Phenoliopsis actually do get a little bit more light, but in general speaking, this would be suited for fells as well, I think. Well, at least that's how they... Um, most of the times I hear that kind of description about the light levels for these guys. I must admit, I had them in home. They didn't re-bloom. And I think they did get a um, bit too less of light. They needed more light. In my opinion, they need more than most of the people describe. I like these color leaves, the silvery green. These do not need more light. I think I, I really at, am at the right point light-wise for these guys. Seeing the color as is for those guys. Well, actually, for all of them, I don't have ones that are very dark anymore they have some other leaves as you can see they were a little bit darker didn't re-bloom also hadn't much ro uh, roots in the pot but um, yeah they, they kind of like the light but not not absolutely no direct sunlight at least in my opinion maybe they can take a little bit but I don't risk it I just give them as bright light as I can without direct sunlight also with growing lights they do not need to be too strong otherwise you will end up having burns on your leaves but um, yeah just a little update soon I will do a um, how I take care of my Miltoniopsis video uh, I will talk about uh, the feed and the light levels but I'm going to change uh, the setup because of that new uh, room I will get. Let me turn 
around and this talk about it in a uh, last video but this uh, after uh, behind this door is a room and it will I will turn it into a uh, arcade room as well so actually I extend my green uh, room there I need growing lights and I think the Miltoniopsis is very suited to grow on the lights because they receive quite quickly a bit too much light and now I could keep up with the temperatures in my greenhouse but if the sun shines on this it's practically it starts in the morning around 11 and goes all the way to the greenhouse until about 6 yeah 6 in the evening I think a, a lot of sunlight means quite some high temperatures and as you all may know these guys do not like that that high temperatures I I think you can go up towards about, uh, around 30 uh, Celsius I don't know the Fahrenheit I'm sorry but 30 degrees Celsius um, but they uh, absolutely no warmer than that I think and I must admit I have them now growing in self-watering setup um, when I had them in speculum moss and bark uh, I couldn't ha they couldn't handle more higher temperatures around 25 26 I think I didn't grow them well back then but I think they can get a little bit get away with a little bit higher temperatures because they are growing in basically in water now so they can keep up hydrating themselves because in the those warmer temperatures they will lose quite a lot of moisture through the leaves and you need to find a way to keep keep them um, hydrated and a self watering, watering setup or a full uh, uh, full water setup growing them in, in completely water without any media um, something like that is very suited for them especially when it's warmer if you have a climate which is warmer a dry climate I really would suggest try this this out I think there are quite a lot of videos uh, out there to tell you how to start with a male toniopsis I promise you I will do my part in, in in that area as well I will come with some uh, how I do care for them I also like I promised I will do a repotting on that beautiful red one so we can follow that one and I can show you what I'm doing to get it uh, to rebloom like these guys uh, and the fertilizer and everything I will talk about everything during the coming months so if you are interested in that um, please let me know and if you have already questions things you would like to know more about the multi please let me know because I then can uh, take those questions into my videos and answer them while I'm filming and probably show some examples so if you have any questions or you want to think about it uh, that's okay you have a uh, a little while before I start to uh, make the care uh, video about these guys but uh, like I said let me know and I will uh, probably um, answer your questions in that video yeah I just like this shot I cannot stop filming now as uh, seriously guys these are my absolute favorites I'm sorry because all my other orchids are around me it isn't fair I know I love them all this is beautiful as well I know and the fan I, I know but this yes I love them and the fragrance you guys don't forget the fragrance they smell fantastic okay I'm gonna leave it uh, for here for now like I said if you have any questions comments please leave them and uh, thank you for watching if you're new here please uh, consider subscribing to my channel I really try to work on uh, very uh, I hope useful uh, videos about taking care of orchids and like I said uh, I will come with a Miltonia updates and um, yeah, once again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you at one of my next uh, videos. Bye bye.